Welcome to the Presbyterian and Reformed Churchman PCA 50th Anniversary General Assembly Edition. This is the first true night of the assembly. The assembly has officially opened tonight, but as you know from the last episode, there were meetings all day yesterday, sort of pre-assembly meetings, meetings all day today, mostly overtures committee meetings, but other committees had met also. And so tonight we open with worship and after worship they begin business and they the, the first order of business is really to elect a moderator and I filmed those speeches. Two men were nominated, uh, Fred Greco and Randy Pope and I'm going to let you hear those speeches recommending them. They're really great speeches, a lot of just really honoring to the men and you'll get to hear the vote and then uh, there's there's some songs I have on this video also and pretty much that'll be it and then at the end I'll come back and tell you uh, the at least one item of, biz of business that we got through after the election of moderator that was pretty kind of shocking but anticlimactic and uh, good news as far as I'm concerned so with that we'll go to some of the music that led us into worship, and uh, John Weiss, the moderator, called us into uh, called the meeting to order. You'll hear the nominations for our moderator and who was elected to be our moderator for this 50th General Assembly. Please come to order. The 50th General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church in America is hereby in session. Let us worship our mighty God. to us. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you forever. Amen. 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 The assembly will now be in recess for 10 minutes. If you would take that time to um, Prepare to conduct the business of the assembly. But it may be distressing to you and to at least a couple of men in the room. So if you would please please come in and take a seat. Thank you. We are now in session once again. I call upon Dr. Chapel, our stated clerk, as the senior parliamentarian to report on whether or not we have a quorum. Sir, do we have a quorum?
Mr. Roderick, we have uh, 2,068 of total enrollment. Um, there will be super quorums that are required tonight with at least a majority of the registrants voting. That will require at least on those super majority votes 1,034 voting, but our total enrollment at the moment is 2,068. And uh, we should open in prayer because they're waiting to roll the video uh, after the prayer. Let me call upon ruling elder Sam Graham to open us in prayer. I've seen him, I believe he's still in the room. If you would, uh, please step to a microphone. Is one to your left across the aisle there. Yeah. Sam, come to two. Let us pray. Oh, Father, we have felt your presence tonight. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for the privilege of worshiping you, Father, in such a faithful way this evening. Father, continue to be with us. Thank you for the fathers and brothers in this room. Thank you for the leadership of our denomination. And Father, be with us, guide us, Put your wisdom and your love in our hearts and our minds. And Father, help us to be gracious towards each other as we seek the truth and discern your ways. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Mr. Moderator, our speaker this evening, Reverend Randy Thompson, mentioned the first speech of the First Assembly with ruling Elder Jack Williamson. Uh, we hope we have that video to go now. to two individuals whose names will be placed in nomination. One of those asked me if his nominator could be recognized last. Shortly after the worship service, a nominator asked me if he could be the second. Is there someone who would volunteer to be a first nominator? <laughs> I recognize microphone number one, sir, for what purpose do you rise? Mr. Moderator, teaching Elder David Strain, the Presbytery of the Mississippi Valley, I rise to place into nomination the name of teaching Elder Fred Greco of the Houston Metro Presbytery. May I proceed, sir? Please do, sir. Mr. Moderator, fathers and brothers, teaching Elder Fred Greco hardly needs much introduction in the General Assembly. He's been a, f a fixture of our church's highest court for the last 21 years. A half century ago, our denomination was formed with a deep commitment to the parity of the eldership and the vital role of teaching and ruling elders for our church's health. Few men have served the assembly as both or understand the demands and the perspectives of both. Fred Greco, however, stands among that number, having served first as a ruling elder commissioner of the Great Lakes Presbytery and then since 2006 as a teaching elder. Given his years of service to our church, his resume in our courts is extensive, so let me just hit a few of the highlights as I commend him to you. He's been a faithful member of the Standing Judicial Commission for 14 years, of which body he has been the chairman eight times. For 13 years he has served on the General Assembly's nominating committee, which he has chaired three times, and on the Overtures Committee, which he has also chaired three times. As a member of the Great Lakes Presbytery, he was chairman of the Candidates and Credentials Committee and for the last 17 years has been a member of the Houston Metro Presbytery, of which he has been moderator twice. And as a ruling elder, Fred was clerk of session at Grace PCA in Hudson, Ohio. The Presbyterian Church in America at 50 is blessed with a galaxy of exemplary teaching and ruling elders who serve our Saviour and our Church faithfully. But when our General Assembly gathers, there are a few men who are especially used of God year upon year to assist us in our deliberations. 
in any list of such men, teaching elder Fred Greco certainly stands in the front rank. Rarely will he rise to offer his own opinion on a point of debate, but we've all seen him serve the entire assembly time and again with words of guidance and help when debate gets snarled up in procedure. His motions are invariably timely and helpful. Perhaps Exhibit A might be the very welcome motion made by Fred at last year's assembly to conclude business before dinner on Thursday evening. <laughs> he is uh, well known at every level of the church's courts to be a man of wisdom and charity who navigates the complexities of parliamentary procedure with understanding and skill. There are very few among us who can lead a meeting as efficiently as Fred Greco. But Fred also has a wide reputation for assisting anyone in the denomination regardless of their perspective or philosophy of ministry and many people from across the PCA seek him out for counsel on how to conduct the business of the church fairly and well. Not infrequently an easily ignored text from a perplexed elder asking for guidance will be answered by Fred not with a few hasty lines but with a thoughtful phone call walking us through the steps and offering sage advice on pitfalls to avoid and best practices to implement. Fred is generous not just with his expertise but with his time too. He is a devoted husband to Deb, his dear wife of 26 years, a loving father to Peter, Daniel, Paul and Abigail. He is a man of God and a faithful pastor to the congregation of Christ Church, Katie, where he has labored under the blessing of the Lord for 17 years. He has a burden for mission and especially for the training of future generations of gospel workers. He lectures regularly on church polity, on worship, ministry and sanctification at Reformed Theological Seminary, from which he himself graduated in 2006. He chairs the board of an underground seminary in East Asia, where he has travelled extensively to train pastors. He was recently the keynote speaker for an MTW Southern Africa conference. Mr. Moderator, fathers and brothers, it is one of my life's highest privileges to count Fred as a very dear friend. There are a few men I esteem more highly or trust more completely. There is one other quality I should mention for which Fred is well known in our assembly. Uh, I don't think Fred has an inside voice. Uh, it's, uh, it's not uncommon in the assembly to hear complaints from the floor that someone addressing us can't be heard. I think Fred is the only man I know of to be heckled from the floor of the assembly while delivering a report from the podium for being too loud. Should all the mics fail if Fred is moderator, there will at least still be one loud voice for decency and order that we will all hear clearly. If this assembly is looking for a moderator who is well respected across the denomination, runs meetings with a fair mind and clear sight, who knows Robert's rules and our Book of Church order as well as anyone and better than most, who is marked by humility, kindness and a servant's heart, who would lead our deliberations with a steady hand so that business is done efficiently and respectfully. On this 50th anniversary, Mr. Moderator, the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church in America could not choose a better man to represent and lead it, and I am honoured to place the name of Teaching Elder Fred Greco into nomination now before the court. Thank you, sir. Microphone number four, Dr. McGowan. Mr. Moderator, my name is Charles McGowan, Teaching Elder, Nashville Presbyterian. I rise, Mr. Moderator, and fellow commissioners to place in nomination the name of Pastor Randy Pope, the founding pastor of Perimeter Presbyterian Church in Atlanta. I place his name in nomination because I believe that on this 50th anniversary of our denomination, we could not find a more fitting nominee uh, to choose as our new moderator because he is the quintessential disciple of two of our most outstanding and much beloved founders, Dr. Jim Baird and Pastor Frank Barker. Let me share with you a few of the reasons why I feel very strongly that he is the person that I would love to see as moderator of the 50th anniversary assembly. 
Randy was born and raised in Jadston, Alabama, and as a teenager, he came to know Christ. He was an active member of First Presbyterian Church, pastored by Dr. Jim Baird, who immediately began to encourage and disciple him as a new follower of Jesus Christ. And through his preaching of the word and through his teaching of the word and his personal interaction with Randy, Randy's enthusiasm for the gospel and for the person of Jesus Christ continued to grow so that when he went off to college, he immediately identified himself with a, a campus movement that continued to train him and encourage him to bear witness to Christ at the University of Alabama. He would make appointments with fellow students and go to their dorm rooms and share Christ with them. And if they would pray with them to receive Christ, he would disciple them while at the same time being a student at the university. During his college years, his, he and some of his friends began to hear about uh, Frank Barker over at Broadwood Church. And so they began to go over on Sunday night to hear Frank preach. And, and they went regularly to hear Frank preach at Broadwood Church. And Frank somehow got to know Randy very, very well and kind of took him under his wings and began to encourage him and disciple him personally. And both Frank Barker and Jim Baird discipled him, encouraged him, and uh, in his ministry until they went to heaven several years ago. After graduating from the University of Alabama, Randy went to seminary, the Reform Seminary, and upon graduation in 1977, he went to Atlanta, Georgia, under the auspices of what is now Mission to North America. In those days, it was called Mission to the United States, MUS. They gave him a stipend of $15,000 to go to Atlanta to plant a church, and they said, we'll do that for one year. <laughs> Randy did not know it, but they didn't pay the first check until he was there for 30 days, and he and Carol wound up in Atlanta with a two-month-old baby and $10 in their pocket. And Randy loves to tell the story of how God faithfully provided uh, during those uh, days when they had no money at all in order to survive. For almost 50 years, Randy led that church. And he led it in accordance with the principles of the founding of the PCA. Faithful to the word of God, true to the reformed faith, and obedient to the Great Commission. He faithfully taught and preached. He. Uh, he taught within the parameters of the Reformed faith, as we know it in the Confession of Faith. And his passion was to see people come to know Christ and to be discipled in their relationship with Christ. And his passion and vision for the church in Atlanta was to see churches planted as a result of his work. He wanted to be a reproducing church, a church that would plant other churches. And over the years, God has blessed that ministry tremendously. Today, over 5,000 people worship at Perimeter Church every Sunday. As far as we can tell, at least 40 churches have been planted in Greater Atlanta as a result of Perimeter's ministry. And probably hundreds of churches all across the nation one of his fellow students that he led to Christ at the University of Alabama, he discipled. When he went off to seminary, he came to work at Perimeter Church. He worked there for 12 years, and then Randy, at his request, sent him to Cincinnati to plant a church, North Cincinnati Church. That church, in 10 years, planted eight churches. And those are the stories that could be repeated again and again and again through the ministry and leadership of Pastor Randy Pope. Randy has developed strong leadership uh, throughout that church. He developed a, a strategy, a curriculum for a three-year discipleship program. And every elder and every deacon in that church and every woman leader has to go through that three-year program 
before they're qualified to be an elder, a deacon, or a woman's leader in the life of that church. Randy is a man who has faithfully followed Christ and has really fulfilled the vision of the founders of the PCA and the kind of church we want to be at the local level. Some people say that perimeter church is kind of the best kept secret in the PCA and that may be true. And if it is true, it's because Randy has been very focused in his ministry. He has been very careful not to quickly say yes to invitations to preach around the world or to write articles or to write books. He's been very focused to stay at perimeter and to train and disciple and to see that church grow and be productive. He's been very faithful to keep his priorities straight, loving God with all of his heart, loving his wife and his children, and then leading the church faithfully. Randy has been a noble and faithful and effective leader in this denomination. And so today we have an opportunity, tonight we have an opportunity to elect what I consider to be the first generation, uh, generation following our founding fathers. Randy was shepherded by Frank Barker and Jim Baird. They arranged before their death to have Randy come and preach their funeral. If Frank Barker and Jim Baird were here tonight, two of our beloved founders, they would vote for Randy Pope to be our next moderator. I'm so honored to know him as a friend. I'm so pleased that we have this kind of leadership in our denomination. And I'm trusting that you will seriously consider joining me in voting for him to be our moderator for this historic 50th anniversary assembly. Thank you very much. Thank you, brother. The chair is not aware of any other nominations, but it is entirely possible that there are others. The chair sees no one moving to a microphone, but the lights are bright. If you're moving that direction, please wave your hand. Seeing none, I declare the nominations to be closed, and we will vote for the election of the moderator. If you will, vote uh, one for Fred Greco, and two for Randy Pope, or A or B, I'm sorry. Just a little additional information Just for so you can Voting is now open. I, I'm sorry? Voting is now open. <laughs> Voting is now closed. Declare Fred Greco to be elected as the moderator of the 50th General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church in America. Please join me in welcoming your new moderator. Fathers and brothers, thank you so much for this honor of serving you in this way. I hope you can all hear me in the back. <laughs> just, just want to make sure. 
Um, I have been blessed to be surrounded by many who have encouraged me and who have spurred me on to service to the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my Lord and Savior most for all that he has equipped me to do as I have been in the pastorate and previously as an elder. It is by the grace of God and the Spirit of God that any of us have any ability to do anything. I'd like to offer a special word of thanks to my dear friend, David Strain, who I love dearly and who was willing to put his good Scottish name on the line by nominating me this evening. I would like to thank the elders of my session at Christ Church, my staff at Christ Church, my fellow presbyters at Houston Metro Presbytery, and I'd like to also especially thank uh, the retiring mod, now retiring moderator, John Bice, for his dear friendship and advice as I serve the church. Most of all, humanly speaking, I would like to thank my wife, Deb Greco. David has mentioned that I have a zeal for helping the church and I take calls from presbyters and from church members and from church session members. And some of you have even asked, how do you do all that? And the answer is, my wife lets me and helps me to do it. Amen. She will often say to me, do you really need to do that? You know, do you have the time? And I will usually say yes, dear, because you're taking up all of the slack everywhere else. And so I have been blessed to be married to her for 26 years. It'll be our 27th anniversary coming up in August. We have four wonderful children who may be watching this live stream now. Uh, I am thankful for all of them and for their uh, love and for their commitment. And I want to encourage you that I intend, as God gives me strength, to lead our General Assembly fairly, promptly, and with a spirit of collegiality. I want to encourage you that this is the 50th anniversary of the PCA. It's the 50th General Assembly. I want you to make a special effort to be collegial, to be kind, to be gracious, to be tempered in your words. I'm not asking you not to disagree. But you can disagree without being disagreeable. And uh, as the watching world looks on, I would love if the reports were that as they watched the assembly, they saw Jesus. Thank you very much. So now we have the, thank you. I didn't realize I get this special honor to uh, make to introduce the presentation to the retiring moderator, ruling Elder John Bice. John, as you know, those of you that have worked with him and saw him in the assembly last year, is a gentleman of first import. He's a fine Christian man. He's a leader in our denomination, and he has been a blessing to all of us. Mr. Moderator, fathers and brothers, it's my privilege and pleasure on your behalf and on behalf of the administrative committee to present in appreciation for service as moderator of the 49th General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church in America, uh, this plaque to John Bice. John. Fathers and brothers, we are going to move now to the adoption of the docket. So there you have it. Fred Greco is our moderator, and he is super qualified and uh, doing a great job already. And then the assembly actually went right into business, and I believe it got through more than it thought it would get through. But we. With that, I don't know if I will be continuing to do these. This is kind of late right now. 
and it's uh, the tech and the, the Wi-Fi here hasn't been great and hasn't been easy to really kind of do this. But I would encourage you now that the assembly has begun to uh, go to the live stream and uh, and check it out. And maybe, I don't know, we'll see if I do another update. Also, uh, PresbyCast. So, you know, the big Presbyterian uh, podcast for the PCA, I believe they were doing an overtures edition tonight where they were probably going to go through the various overtures that the assembly will be considering in the next uh, couple days and so uh, tune into presbycast for that and with that this is the presbyterian and reformed churchman i'm pastor george signing off I'm gonna get the